Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. I'm Harry Donahue. Today at Aronimic Golf Club in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania, the site of the 22nd annual Jay Siegel Invitational. For the last 22 years, Jay Siegel has hosted this charity event. You know, Jay for years was arguably one of the top amateur golfers in American golf history. At the age of 50, he turned professional and had several wins on what is now known as the Champions Tour. This year, he hosted more than 100 golfers, again, in an effort to raise money in cancer research. For the last 12 years of this tournament, the main beneficiary has been the Abramson Family Institute for Cancer Research at the University of Pennsylvania. And this year, Jay had one of his buddies from the Champions Tour return as the honored guest, Bob Murphy. Yes, the same Bob Murphy who had his first PGA Tour win back in 1968 in the Philadelphia area at White Marsh Valley Country Club. And then went on to a stellar career both on the regular tour and the Champions Tour before becoming a television analyst. So we'll be back to take a look at the 22nd annual Jay Siegel Invitational with the host Jay Siegel and his good friend and honored guest, Bob Murphy. Coming up next on Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management, helping you build, manage, and preserve wealth. By PGN Plus, play your golf bucket list. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Whether you are beginning to plan for your future, building your nest egg, or nearing retirement, Susquehanna Wealth Management will take the time to understand your unique situation and provide a customized, comprehensive strategy. From investment management and trust services to retirement planning for you or your business, we can help you develop a long-term plan to meet your specific financial goals. We understand that through life stages, your needs and financial objectives change. No matter where you are in life or how much wealth you have accumulated, we're always available to sit down with you to review your plan and adjust it as necessary. Susquehanna Wealth Management. Susquehanna Wealth Management. Helping you build, manage, and preserve wealth. At this moment, across the country, families are packing their bags for a getaway. And no matter where they end up, they'll all be home by dinner. Plan your own at PlayGolfAmerica.com. From finding fun and affordable programs to finding advice from PGA and LPGA professionals, PlayGolfAmerica.com has a way for you to get away. Visit today for details. PlayGolfAmerica.com, your link to the game. Welcome back to Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. We're at the Jay Siegel Invitational here at Aronimic, and Jay's honored guest this year is Bob Murphy. Now, Bob Murphy, for those of you who don't know, had a stellar career as an amateur and as a professional. In fact, he won the U.S. Amateur, was the NCAA champion at the University of Florida before turning professional, and in 1968, actually won his first PGA Tour event here in the Philadelphia area. Bob went on to play in the Ryder Cup. Oh, and as an amateur, he also played in the Walker Cup. Bob Murphy joined us on Inside Golf here at the Jay Siegel Invitational. Bob, it's great to see you. Welcome back to Aronomy. Thank you. Hey, it's good for me to be in Philadelphia. Uh, won my first tournament here, so I you don't know, forget. That. I, I did a little history, Bob, knowing that I'd be seeing you here today back in, I think it was 1968 at White Marsh Valley Country Club. Right. Uh, that tournament had different names over its course of time, and I think then it may have been called the uh, Philadelphia Golf Classic, was it, or the IVB Golf Classic? IVB, I believe, yep. yep. And that was your first win. My first win, sure was, and I won in a playoff, and uh, uh, very happy, <laughs> very happy to pull that one out, but I had a great experience there. It was the first time I'd ever played with Jack Nicklaus, and, and I played with him uh, the last two rounds, Saturday and Sunday, and uh, so I was I was very happy that I was able to control myself uh, playing with Jack and and winning. Well, it wasn't like you kind of just sprung on the scene. Let's go back a little bit prior to that. You won the U.S. Amateur. 
right. uh, when you were an amateur. You were the NCAA champion as a team with Florida and the individual champion right. at the University of Florida. It gets better, folks. <laughs> you were a member of the Walker Cup team that won against Great Britain out in Ireland. Right. And uh, you turned pro right after 1967, I think you got out of college, was it, or 66? Yeah, I got out of school in 66, uh, and, I, and I wanted to remain an amateur so I could play the Walker Cup and the World Cup. We played the Eisenhower World Cup down in Mexico. So uh, those things I wanted to do uh, while I was still an amateur, yeah. So you turned pro in 1968. You win at White Marsh, and you went on to win, I think, what, four more PGA Tour events. Yeah, I did. I, 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 was, I was very fortunate. I had a lot of seconds, which I wish I had a chance to go back and redo a couple of those shots. But... Uh, <laughs> You know, winning is a, a special thing, and so my last win was a Canadian Open, and and uh, beat poor old Greg Norman. You you know you heard we, we, I, we've heard of the shark. You beat yeah. him. Uh, were you playing together in the last day we or two? Playing together the last day, and and uh, 18 up at uh, the the golf course uh, Glen Abbey in in uh, Canada, and it's a par five and. You know, most guys can reach it in two, and I had hit my best ever drive on that that hole. Greg was in the bunker, so he had to lay out to the left. Now, bear in mind, I've got a four-shot lead, and I get ready to hit, and I'm hitting a nine iron, and he comes over and he says, what are you doing? I said, I'm laying up right over there, Greg. I'm gonna hit this right over there, about 120, <laughs> and then I'm gonna have 105 left. I'm gonna put that on the green about six feet, and I'm going to make it, and I'm going to beat you by five. <laughs> <laughs> Golf course management, right? That's right. That's right. You know, Bob, when I, I look back at your career, you were a baseball player, weren't you, of yeah. uh, some regard, too, as a youngster or, and uh, through high school? Yeah, I played, uh, I played baseball and uh, come from a very small school, country school, and I didn't play golf. I caddied for my dad, um, but... Um, I, I got injured. I had my right shoulder separated and my pitching arm. And uh, there I was at the University of Florida and uh, they were gonna try to do all these operations, which then were 25% successful. Today it would take two little cuts like that and be done. Well, I started playing golf. I was in pre-med and I started playing golf for something to do. and. Uh, I took a required physical education class of golf and the golf coach was teaching it and he asked me if I'd like to learn to play. And I said, yes. Well, and it's, uh, Florida is one of the, I guess you could call it almost a factory when it comes to turning out guys that go on to play in in, in the pros. Uh, Gary Hoke, I know, was uh, a Gator, right, among yeah, others. absolutely, Gary Coke. They were after me, Andy Bean, Andy North. Uh, Prior to that, the same man that taught me taught Dave Reagan and Doug Sanders and Tommy Aaron and Frank Beard and and uh, Steve Melnick, who won the amateur, and also Jerry Pate. So he was a good teacher. Yeah, I've been at the pro shop down there, and I know they have all the pictures of the guys, and yeah. it takes up a couple walls. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, the one thing I remember about your swing, you almost came to a complete stop at the top of your swing. How did that start, and did anybody ever say, wait a minute, wait a minute, you gotta, you got to change that? It started because I played baseball. And when I started playing golf, I had a wild swing, and it was quick and fast and inside and outside. and uh, I could hit a long way, but uh, take three caddies to find it. So uh, I said to myself, I can hit a baseball where I stand and I hold the bat quiet, very quietly, and then drive off and hit. Why can't I take a golf club and put it up there, get quiet, uh, and then go from there? So that's how that happened. Yeah. And nobody ever tried to change it? Your golf, your swing coach or anybody else? No, a matter of fact, he, um, he was very much in favor of it, and uh, he did teach a little bit of that same thing, that same idea with uh, Jerry Pate and Steve Melnick. So it worked. It sure did. Uh, final question, 1975, you played on the U.S. team that won the Ryder Cup. In fact, you beat Tony Jacklin, who uh, has been a guest here of Inside Golf in the past. And uh, I'm curious about your thoughts of what's happened to the U.S. 
in the Ryder Cup competition over the last 10, 15 years, vis-a-vis -vis back in those days, and then also the comments that Phil made uh, after this year's event uh, toward aimed toward, you know, he said it wasn't Tom Watson. Right. Well, Tom Watson and myself and uh, our wives traveled together for 15, 16 years on tour, and I will tell you that he's a strong-minded guy. You know that from watching him play. Uh, but he, he he evidently told the guys, I'm doing four things here, bang, bang, bang. And then he didn't do those four things. And so the guys like Phil Mickelson uh, said, hey, wait a minute, what, what are we doing? We're varying off of our, our point that we had. And so uh, they can say whatever they want. But when they watch those Europeans putt the golf ball, uh, I watched it on Sunday, and I swear the what I saw, they didn't miss one putt from two feet to, to 25. So that's hard to beat. Is there a culture among the European team members compared to the U.S. members maybe? Uh, they want the, the Ryder Cup means more to them, do you think, than it does to the Americans? Uh, it means more to them, I think. and. And that's the hard part for the captain is to instill the desire to, to win that cup. And now, when I played on the Ryder Cup, for example, it, it wasn't much of a competition. That was 1975. And the next year, Jack Nicklaus and Arnold Palmer went to the PGA of America and they said, we need to change us playing against Europe and Great Britain, uh, ex excuse me, Great Britain and Ireland, we need to include all of Europe. And, and along came uh, Severino Ballesteros and right. things changed pretty quickly. Right, and Tony Jacklin being the great organizer and, and uh, just, he had the great invigoration and the, and the interest. And um, uh, I, I'm uh, disappointed, but um, you know, children, if you could play better, you would have won. All come to, like in football, it's blocking and tackling. There you go. And in golf, you got to make putts. You got to make putts. That's the name of the game. And and uh, the American squad didn't do it. But I'll give you one one hint. Okay, the greens were slow. The greens were slower than they normally are. The Americans are not used to playing on greens with a speed of ten. They're used to twelve and a half or thirteen. And they, that's what happened. See, they can control their own golf course. I think Paul McGinley set it up that oh, way, huh? Yeah, without question. Yeah. And then, P.S., on Sunday, <laughs> they cut the greens down, didn't they? The greens were much faster. And all the hole locations, right in a flat area. They weren't going to take any chance on having them force their guys shoot at targets and get in trouble. So they put them in the middle of the green and... They did it. They did it. All right. Well, there's always next time around for uh, the Americans in the Ryder Cup. But, Bob, you have a perfect record, 1-0 in the Ryder Cup. You can't get much better than that. <laughs> well, I had, I had fun. I played uh, – uh, show you how much we really cared about what was going on. I played with Jack Nicklaus in the alternate shot and Lee Trevino in the best ball. Well, it should be the other way around because Trevino and I played the same way. Uh, Nicholas said to me on about the second hole, he says, Bob, I've never hit a six iron to this hole ever uh, because of my short drive. And I said, well, Jack, I, I've never been in the rough on the first hole, but I was today. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Murph, always a pleasure. Okay. Good luck to you yep. the rest of your uh, career and uh, get back healthy, get out there on the golf course and make it happen. Yeah, good, good. Pause, of course prostate cancer research, but we do so much uh, for other cancer situations. Uh. Golf is your passion. Each round is a unique experience with memories that last a lifetime. Make your next round one to remember with PGNplus.com, the professional golfer's network. Sign up for free for exclusive access to the best private courses in your area. Already a country club member? Go to pgnplus.com to learn how to take your membership further. Play your golf bucket list only on pgnplus.com. Book your tee time today. 
If you haven't seen it already, I'd like to introduce you to Jersey Man Magazine, published by former Eagle tight end Ken Dunnick. It's the only men's magazine in our area. Enjoy articles on cigars, martinis, the mob, business, politics, and, of course, golf. Written by big-time journalists like George Anastasia, Bill Lyons, Sam Carcitti, and many others. Subscriptions are only $20 a year and are available at jerseymanmagazine.com. Well, it is the 22nd year of the Jay Siegel Invitational here at Aronomic, and look who it is, the host himself, Jay Siegel. Jay, 22 years, it's one of the longest running and one of the premier charity events, not only in Philadelphia, but around the country. Yes, Harry, nice of you to be here, and uh, yeah, we're thrilled at the turnout again, and uh, a lot of hustling going on uh, in the last few weeks, but, uh, you know, talk about team effort. Uh, This is really a huge team effort. We have, uh, we have groups that have been with us every year, major corporations, um, individuals, pretty neat, pretty neat. And uh, the cause, of course, it's prostate cancer research, but we do so much uh, for other cancer situations. Uh, I have the ability to have access to uh, the best at Penn, and uh, we, get, we get some great results. We've got many, many success stories. What was the initial attraction to uh, have the event and in particular have it focus on the Abramson Research Center at the University of Pennsylvania? Well, my dad passed away from cancer years ago and um, I, we got involved with the American Cancer Society and and, uh, then uh, shortly thereafter, Arnold Palmer came down with prostate cancer. The guys started talking about it we realized that the guys didn't know anything about prostate cancer awareness. Then Colbert, my good friend Jim Colbert, same thing. So we learned a little bit more. It made sense for us to shift to prostate cancer awareness because the women do such a better job than the men. So here we are. It's a good time for people to get together, play golf, but also gives them the opportunity to realize, hey guys, you got to take care of yourself, your health, and it's a wake-up call for a lot of people. Absolutely. It's amazing how many guys don't. And we've got, we've got guys on the committee who had prostate cancer in their 40s. People look at me and they say, how could that be? Well, it, it, it happens. And it's probably a little more aggressive the younger you are as opposed to getting it Correct. in uh, the, the elderly years. Jay, while I have you here, uh, the recent Ryder Cup, I'm curious, you didn't participate in a Ryder Cup, but you only played in nine Walker Cups, which is the amateur version, uh, a very successful record. And I'm just curious your thoughts on what has been transpiring and then unfortunately what happened at the end of this year's competition between Phil Mickelson and Tom Watson. Well, as an amateur, clearly making the Walker Cup team was the pinnacle probably of any any amateur's career. Um, We felt such pressure, and we really, really uh, tried hard to perform. Not that that our pros in the Ryder Cup didn't. Uh, I think when you, you look at Ryder Cup every two years and then President's Cup in alternating years, There's so much golf for these guys. It's pretty difficult to be up uh, like the amateurs for the Walker Cup. So, in fairness, um, well, I I would have to say that the Euro, the Euros, look far more excited and interested in uh, in in the event than our guys. And our guys were tired for coming off the FedEx Cup. So there are a lot of reasons. um, You know, I think if stretched it all out and you and you and you equalize things both teams were rested and um, it would be a different different story and it always comes down to who's playing the better golf and for some reason this time of the year the Ryder Cup or whatever it is the Euros seem to have a better game than the Americans do no question I'm you know I was talking to Bob Murphy just the other day and as we were watching it and I'm saying look at our putts coming up short coming up short and he said, you know, I'm just wondering if, if they didn't slow the greens down there um, to affect us. Our, our guys are always putting on 12, 12 green speeds, and I think they were probably nine 
early in the week. Uh, you know, I, obviously they were going to they were having some wind. That makes a difference. Tell us about uh, where your golf game is right now. And uh, you know, I know you've had your series of shoulder problems and things like that. How's your overall fitness for golf? My uh, <clears throat> well, I haven't played in ten days because of a back situation. Um, my golf's been actually pretty good. I, I uh, I've got a file of shooting my age and breaking my age. I broke my age the other day by four or five. That was pretty good. So, um, so that means you're somewhere around what, 66, 67? My scoring, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's on right. That, around that round. That was about 60, 66. It was. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So. I, I didn't mean to give away your age. No, no, but. no. No, you didn't. You didn't. <laughs> yeah. Jay, on behalf of uh, all the people that are here and the beneficiaries over the years of what you've done, thank you. Harry. And uh, I hope there's 22 more years left. Thank you. Thanks for being here. We've been very successful in treatment with radiation and then for men who fail that, you know, other options including hormone therapy and chemotherapy. At this moment, across the country, Families are packing their bags for a getaway. And no matter where they end up, they'll all be home by dinner. Plan your own at PlayGolfAmerica.com. From finding fun and affordable programs to finding advice from PGA and LPGA professionals, PlayGolfAmerica.com has a way for you to get away. Visit today for details. PlayGolfAmerica.com, your link to the game. When you step out, make sure you go all in. Because at Valley Forge Casino Resort, we're rolling out the action. And we'll bring it all to the table. So take us for a spin. And go all in for the win. Valley Forge Casino Resort. It's safe, it's chic, and only a shuffle away from the main line. Welcome back to Inside Golf presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. We're at Aronda McGough Club and the 22nd annual Jay Siegel Invitational that benefits and has through its entire 22 years cancer research at the Abramson Research Center at the University of Pennsylvania. Dr. David Lee is uh, head of surgery at uh, Presbyterian Hospital and also he is a professor of urology at the Perlman School at the University of Pennsylvania Hospital. Dr. Lee, uh, you know what this tournament has done locally when it comes to research, especially prostate cancer research. Yeah, Jay has been very generous with his support over the years of running this tournament, which uh, people enjoy very, very much to come out and play this wonderful course, but the proceeds go to help uh, support the cancer research that goes on specifically in prostate and in breast cancer. How is the battle against prostate cancer going? I think it's going really, really well. You know, I think one of the controversies that come, has come out recently is about whether we should screen men or not. But um, beyond that, the research that has been going on for men who have it and then have uh, a cancer that uh, should be treated, um, we've been very successful in uh, the research aspect, but also in treatment with surgery, treatment with radiation, and then for men who fail that, you know, other options including hormone therapy and chemotherapy. Something else I think that's important is just getting people's, uh, shall we say, radar up on the screen and recognizing, hey, you may feel healthy, you may be in an age where you feel invincible, but you can't overlook the possibility of prostate cancer developing. Absolutely. You know, it's important always to get your routine physical checkup, but then there are certain screening tools that we have for specific types of cancer, including prostate cancer, colorectal cancer, and for prostate cancer, it's, it's as simple as getting a blood test. And so the PSA blood test can really help us to screen for prostate cancer. And then when we find it, you know, we have to make a good treatment decision, whether it's surgery or even observation for some older men with a small amount of early prostate cancer. And so, you know, but getting it checked out, making sure we know what we're dealing with, that's the important thing. And it seems like men a lot of times, just unlike maybe women, uh, put off, you know, an appointment with the doctor, an annual physical, for whatever reason we don't know but are you finding more and more men coming to you saying hey i feel okay but i just want to make sure i'm okay absolutely you know i think as people um as 
more and more people learn about prostate cancer, they understand it's not something to be scared of. And women, you're right, have been very proactive about their health with screening for breast cancer, but I think men are getting to that same place. And so, you know, going to your physician, getting it checked out, um, and getting informed about it, that's that's the uh, keys for success. Okay, since we're here at Aronomic for uh, Jay's Invitational, how's your game? Oh, my game is, it's all, it's a work in progress. <laughs> but um, yeah, I try to get out once a week. I'm a single digit handicap player, so yeah, I can't complain about that with the rest of my busy schedule, so. Well, it sounds like the work is progressing then, <laughs> single digit handicapper. Yeah, no, I've been playing since I was a kid, so it's something I've always enjoyed. Dr. So, David Lee, thanks for yeah. taking time out. Thank you. So much. Good luck with your work, and thank you for what you're doing for men and everyone at uh, the University of Pennsylvania and the Abramson Research Center. Thanks. No, thanks for um, you know raising the awareness for this because that's really the important thing. Thanks very much. Golf is your passion. Each round is a unique experience with memories that last a lifetime. Make your next round one to remember with PGNPlus.com, the professional golfers network. Sign up for free for exclusive access to the best private courses in your area. Already a country club member? Go to pgnplus.com to learn how to take your membership further. Play your golf bucket list only on pgnplus.com. Book your tee time today. Susquehanna Wealth Strategies has financial consultants throughout Susquehanna Bank's footprint. We're experienced in meeting with individuals, families, and small businesses to assess their goals and outline their objectives. We really work on working collaboratively with our retail banking partners to provide counsel to clients in, in areas that range from college planning to insurance review, to asset allocation, and one of the most important risk assessments. The team's focus is surrounded around a relationship needs-based approach, and this is placing focused attention on each client's situation and unique financial needs. We believe that strong relationships are the key to successful implementation of any plan and working with Susquehanna Wealth Strategies is no different. Susquehanna Wealth Strategies is a Satara Investment Service Program. We have all the products that you would find with any full service investment group. These products range from life insurance to annuities to mutual funds and fee based money management. Our team of professionals is always excited to meet new clients and begin mapping out a plan for their financial success. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of Inside Golf from Aronomic Golf Club and the 22nd annual Jay Siegel Invitational. We want to thank Jay and his special guest, Bob Murphy, for joining us. Always a pleasure to hear the perspective of two guys from maybe a different era, but played the same game of golf as it's played today. Next week, we will be at Lookaway Golf Club in Buckingham, Pennsylvania, for the Rank Foundation Golf Event. Dave Rinks, the superintendent that, at Lookaway, and Dave tragically back. lost his son to brain cancer and has been doing something with the Rank Foundation to help Children's Hospital in the area of cancer research. I'm Harry Donahue, and remember, no matter how bad it's going for you out there, don't pick up, and we'll see you next time on Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management. Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Wealth Management, helping you build, manage, and preserve wealth. By PGN Plus, play your golf bucket list. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf.